You're listening to Destination Utopia. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Rose Mead. We're going to talk about binary thinking today, and kind of how binary thinking kind of comes naturally, because it's really easy, and kind of flight or fight situations, survival situations, have made snap judgment, then how that kind of gets used against you in higher reasoning. And you brought up something before, kind of a political thing. People were making a binary out of immigrants and veterans, kind of making them mutually exclusive where you can't take care of veterans and immigrants too, acting like it has to be one or the other. And um, what was the meme that you're talking about? I don't remember what it said exactly. The original one was somebody in a military uniform holding up a sign, and I forget what the sign said. It said something about, it said basically something about taking care of soldiers before taking immigrants, taking care of immigrants. Uh -huh. And my point was like, what does one have to do with the others? And why can't we just do both of them? Right. Yeah. And he's kind of lost that binary thinking and trying to get everybody in on it. It's this really binary, polarized political field. And it doesn't even have to be that way. Yeah. I had seen another one not too long after the Ferguson shooting, which um, like actually made me defriend somebody because I, I didn't even want to talk about it, you know? Right. I was just like, okay, this is so fucking stupid. I I don't want to ever even. see you on Facebook. Yeah. And it was a story about a woman who was raped and killed by three black men. And nobody was reporting on it. And it, it was like, oh, Obama, why don't you say this is a shame? Mm -hmm. And it's like, what you know it it is a shame there's there's no arguing that you know what's obama suddenly have to do with this <laughs> yeah, you want him to speak on every single thing that happens in the whole country yeah just like when you'll hear people be like uh oh you never you never hear about white people getting shot by cops they do all the time on freaking cop block actually yeah, you know, I it, there's a white teacher got sprayed in the face with pepper spray in Seattle. It just came out on social media. I, so, you know, I haven't looked at that one yet. Politicized as much. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not the media buzz. It's not uh -huh. cops shooting people and the brutality at cops' hands. It is a racist thing. Now, there's definitely a racist component in some of this. I'm not saying that. You know, but the but the overall right. story is that they're brutalizing and killing a lot of people. And the color doesn't really seem uh -huh. to matter at all. You it know? It seems like they get away with it a little easier if they kind of you know, do it to people. They're kind of you know, marginalized for the most part in society. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely there's definitely a racist component going on as well, mm -hmm. you know. But that's that's not the whole thing. So, what are, what are some of the things that you think about the binaries and binary thinking? Um, like I said, it's really easy to fall into it and never realize what you're doing. You know, it's kind of an area of lower reasoning where you have to make quick decisions, you know, which way to go. Should I eat this or should I not eat this? There's you know, a world of you know, opposites that help you kind of get through your day making really fast decisions, really fast judgments. Yeah. So like when it comes to, you know, political issues and, you know, the areas of higher reasoning and logic, you know, they're not useful. Yeah. And they kind of operate more to get people, like we've talked about before, and different ends of, you know, supposed of, supposed political spectrum. They get people kind of using their instincts to reason when they should be using their minds. Um, it kind of makes us really vulnerable to being manipulated, you know, purposefully or unpurposefully 
into these really kind of small-minded debates. Right. So you never look for the third option, even, even though there's, you know, it could be ten options, we're still stuck on two options that we think are complete opposites and having this binary thinking, we just kind of go for it. Mm-hmm. And definitely media uses it a lot, like when we were just talking about, you know, Ferguson, it's all, you know, black people against white people, it's kind of how they're trying to paint it. And a lot of people are falling for it. Right. And that's not the correct binary even. Like, it could be a binary. You know, it could be, you know, government against people, cops against people. But even that kind of binary is really simple. It's not as if, you know, there's only one type of person that will become a cop. You know yeah. what I mean? Just kind of, it really oversimplifies thinking when the thinking they should be doing should have lots of components considered yeah. I, uh, I was raised on top shows <laughs> top shows and top movies and things like that you know none of my heroes like Loretta or anything like that they would have just shot some guy for shoplifting you know if they had to bring him in they would tackle him to the ground you know do something and get him in that office and not shoot him. Like, you know, he must have seen lethal weapon at some point. Um, there was a scene where Danny Glover, a house blew up. And there uh-huh. was some witness, one of the witnesses was a small black boy. Um, and Danny Glover went over to talk to him and he was like, you shoot black people. My mom tells me you shoot black people. And Danny Glover was trying to explain, like, no, if I have to shoot him, I just can't keep shooting you up to stop him. Right. What happens to that? <laughs> <laughs> what happens to the warning shots? There used to be, you know, it used to be one of the rules that you would have to fire two warning shots in the air. Before shooting at someone. Is that still technically a rule, or do they get rid of that completely? I do not know. I don't know if, they, if, it's, if they've gotten rid of it or what's happened. Mm-hmm. You know, but it definitely used to be a rule at one point. And it's, you know, what did happen to it? It sounds like a fine rule to me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a great rule. Especially like, over all the stupid shit they're shooting people over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's another story recently, I saw it like yesterday. I didn't go in and read the full story, but it was a car full of teenage girls. And supposedly they stole the car. And she got shot and killed because she was driving it and maybe might have backed into a police officer, so he shot her. I mean, I don't see how she, shooting her is going to stop the car. Like, that's going to make her definitely not stop, probably. I actually haven't read the actual article yet, uh, but I saw that there was a follow up. They have the actual full people to stop. Right, yeah, I'm pretty sure she didn't actually hit him. Like, see, that was kind of a snap judgment that shouldn't have happened. He's kind of thinking his only option is to shoot her or get hit. He could have moved, possibly. I don't know how fast it was going, but I feel like it wasn't going that fast. He was able to shoot and hit her. Um, actually, I have a friend who had raised an issue on her status very much like this. It's not the fine of it. Uh, it was she was actually speaking to you about doing the show. Oh. Okay, because we were talking about. Uh huh. Um, she's going to. She's in two of them, as I you know. And then, uh, if I ever. But, like, you know, I, I, and then I had this idea to do a show, and I was like, um, I think I'm not going to know what the other thing is. So, by the way, <laughs> I'm not going to 
Sorry, Charlotte. Um, and I finally had this idea to do this show, and I <laughs> and then I, I had always admired and what a little radical the way he was. And I saw the world in the world. And I saw I'm glad I'm keeping in line in what you had in mind for the show. Yeah. Um, but she had raised something about that as well. About Gender not really being an either or condition. Like, I had that kind of structure in the way that it was put that way. And to be honest, you know, I treat people like, like people the best I can. Right. That's the end of the story. It's not very really complicated. Enough. But I kind of have a hard time wrapping my own definition of gender. You know, except I came up with this beautiful way of saving. It's none of my fucking business. <laughs> a lot more people should come up with that. It's magical. You know, so so that thing that she put out, it was like, okay, I you know, gender not being this and that necessarily. Uh, me personally. Like take a label or something, we have to conform to that label, right? You, know, you tell little girls that you know you're a girl, you have fifth girls' toys. I feel like it happens not as severe as it used to be. I was allowed to play with whatever toys, pretty much, but it's still kind of like segregated in the stores and everything. You get this idea when you're a kid, like, well, I need to play with these toys. Like other little girls, like those are boys' toys, and it's kind of it's all these little things. Mm-hmm. That, you know, since you are a certain thing, you need to have this behavior. And you get kind of policed for not having it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it starts right off the bat, you know. You're female, I'm male, and like one of the first things in our heads is like sugar and spice and everything nice. Uh-huh. Spurs and females and puppy dog tails. You know, your your baby room not necessarily, but for the most part <laughs> Right. There is a sociological study, I, I can't find the references or anything, but they kind of surveyed like new parents, like the newborns, kind of asked them to describe them. And pretty much across the board, like they described the little boy babies as newborns, they're like exactly the same. Like it's exactly the same. They're describing like, you know, the male voice is alert and I don't want to say tough because they're newborns, but it kind of gave them more masculine traits, like, you know, alert smart, different things like that. And said little girls are like, no, they're soft. There's, there's kind of like this, these genders, these attributes kind of imposed on them before they have a chance to, you know, develop any of those characteristics at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and like my room would probably be decorated with my boys or space books or, you know, space I actually have a lot of this. Uh-huh. Um, yours would probably be like more clothes and kittens. I had things horses. Like, what? I had horses. Horses? I had horses all over the room. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that, that training starts early. Mm hmm. It's not something people are really conscious of. It's just, you know, what you do. Yeah. 
there's always kind of different dialogues about raising boys and raising girls. We can't just focus on like raising good people. We have to focus on raising them to fit their described niche. But you were also thinking about um, if they could be sleep teachers. And I was like almost asleep, just like months ago. And it just like came into my head. And I was like, what the fuck? Like blew my mind. I've been thinking about that ever since. Could it, is it possible to wrap our mind around it? It kind of like happens all the time. Our opposite kind of only a creation of our mind anyway. There's really no such thing as opposites because they're all based. The difference between light and dark, like if you kind of look at it objectively, it's pretty arbitrary because you can't see like most of the spectrum. I just don't know. I just don't know. What do you think? Uh, well, a couple of things. Uh, for one, because um, you had also mentioned. To opposites. Um, is, it's such a thing. Right. And here, anyway. Here in the third dimension, you know, um, binary pair, that is. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you go to the fourth dimension, same kind of thing, it would probably be a beautiful structure. Right. Like, logically, it makes sense, but only if there is such a thing as opposites exist with outside of our own mind and understanding. Uh, and then there is fuzzy logic that mostly in, in artificial intelligence um, to try to more simulate how people actually think their um, we can accept One of the it's kind of hard to describe, but one of the examples is trying to mathematically calculate what a human is doing or what they're trying to find what they're doing. Pairs of opposite with respect to community. You know, so there is a True and not true at the same time. I don't think I get it because if it has to be a definite somewhere. Well, true and not true at the same time is um, not something we really see in the outside world, but it's something I have noticed quite often on an emotional level. You know, (laughs) you can't do that. So, so. On an emotional level, things can be true and not true at the same time. Okay, yeah. And if you are, if emotions, I don't know, if Alex the room is talking, do you think maybe emotion plays into that somehow and how you're making that choice? Mm-hmm. To, I don't know. Yeah, it's emotions, I think they're a lot more swept up in how we sense the world. Then we really think about it. Yeah. I have a lot of kind of like emotional memories where it's hard to explain. But I can kind of separate my memories by how I felt at the time and kind of refill the emotion and be able to categorize things. Yeah. So definitely very up in there when it comes to your mental processes. 
And as far as balancing a brew, you know what it's that? It's your mind with your brain sending electrical impulses through your nerves, that feeling, you know, which way it's going, and then directing your muscles. So it's, you know, includes a lot of things. I don't know if emotion plays into that, because that's a pretty, pretty mechanical. Now, here's something going completely off the topic, but I've been thinking about this. Well, I've thought of it several times in my life, but I've been thinking about it kind of recently again. Um, about Ronald Reagan. Okay. And my question is, is an insane person still insane if they happen to have been right? Well, it depends, like, how they happened to be right. Like, did they find evidence and kind of conclude things and everybody just didn't believe them because it sounded insane or it was just kind of accidental that they were right? Uh, no, he had a plan in mind. He implemented the plan. The plan worked and the whole time he could not control how he was killed. <laughs> you know, he had the Star Wars defense initiative. Okay? Um, you don't recall this? Well, I you don't recall. You haven't read about it? No. <laughs> I, I was there. <laughs> okay. So he had the Star Wars defense initiative. And they rolled this out in a big way. And it was all over the magazine. And it was basically a, a space based defense system against the Russian bombs. Uh-huh. You know, because this was this was the peak of the Cold War. And he was like always connected with the like, you shut up <laughs> you know? And we had come close to quite a few nuclear accidents here. And the missiles had almost just started to run. Um and he, he rolls us out everywhere, and everybody is talking about it. And And what wound up happening is that the Russians, the Soviet Union, started investing all their money into scientific research to come up with something against the, against the uh, space commission. Uh huh. That's what collapsed the Soviet Union. That's when the war started to go. We ran them fucking through. <laughs> so, is there the whole, actually a plan and movement towards creating the, nope. the Star Wars defense program? Or is it nope, just never awful? was. Oh, that's so funny. It was total bullshit the whole fucking time. <laughs> but in the meantime, we were scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> We're really pissing them off. They're, they're going to have to do something. You know? So, like, nuclear war always felt good. Yeah. I've, I've read about, like, the whole situation, that whole era. I just didn't know about that particular event. That's crazy. Well, yeah, that's... It was insane. Not just because it didn't work. I think antagonizing them, that was insane. But kind of fabricating that story, not a bad idea at all. And and again, it did work. You know, the Soviet Union did not just suddenly decide, you know, this whole communist thing, not really working out. Hey, sorry about that. Uh, I don't know if it was you or me. One of us, I think it was me. Yeah, one of us dropped. My internet connection is not really the best either. I thought it was a computer. My computer, like, sometimes to not connect to the internet. Anyway, what were we saying? Uh, Ronald Reagan. I think, we, I think we're pretty much finishing up with Ronald Reagan. Huh? Okay. 
kind of a recap on binaries. I'm kind of not very good at staying on topic and getting everything I want to say said. Just kind of what I mean by binaries, just for the audience, not talking about our system. Kind of like illustration of things as opposites. So understanding and illustrating things that way. And a false binary is when things aren't even opposites, they're not like the only options. Another thing that happens with binaries is you, you think they're the only option. And there's only Republican or Democrat. Right. Um, would you also include things like rich and poor? Yeah, so binary kind of ignores like a huge middle portion. That's something that's really being ignored right now in politics. Is, you know, hear very little about the middle class, all about you know, the elite taking advantage of the poor, actually taking advantage of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't understand why a lot of people do not seem to know when they have enough money. You know? Right. Um, I think at a certain point, you'd be like, no, I'm, I'm good now. I think I'll stop exploiting people. If, if I could do the things that I want to do in my life, I don't need a whole heck of a lot. For Christ's sake, I do not know what I would possibly do with something like that. <laughs> you have to pay to have somebody clean it. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, who the hell wants staff? Buzzing around in a house all the time. I don't know. That's such a bizarre house. Don't you get what a house that you're comfortable in? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Uh, I kind of figured that if I have enough money coming in to, like, fund my next future film, you know, and mm -hmm. say maybe a hundred grand. For the year for like living expenses, you know, and that That's would be really that would be for me and you, you know. Mm -hmm. We're making it right now, combined salary, yeah, maybe 50 grand, mm -hmm. you know, which puts us on the low end of middle class, um, yeah, you know, so a hundred grand, a nice raise, you know, if it's something nothing ostentatious. Mm -hmm. you know, um, a house with just a bit more room, you know, mm -hmm. an office, maybe a basement. I, I can do it. I can do it. And a full basement. You know, if we, if we want to shoot a particular scene or something, we're going to create it. Mm -hmm. I think another binary that comes up is that rich people are always guilty and poor people are always innocent or um, depending who you are. So that's kind of a common binary, too. Yeah, just because you're rich doesn't mean that you exploited people. It could be, definitely. But it's not the only way to get rich. No. No, it's not the only way to get rich. Um, it's just the most popular way. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest way. It's the easiest way, yeah. Um, well, it, it and that's where it kind of seems like, you know, your side is always right. Uh-huh. So if you are if you're poor, then yes, the poor person is innocent. If you're rich, then the rich person is innocent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's depending who you are. Yeah. If you're a gentleman, then the gentleman is always right. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a binary that's just kind of control their whole society. Really, the pitfall of it. Just kind of reading a bit about breaking out of binary thinking. 
I kind of started doing it already, kind of not as an exercise. Sometimes, like, you hear a binary like that, and you're like, wait a minute, wait, no. Like, one, last I remember, I was watching a documentary about space or something, and the inter- there's an introduction with, you know, there's here, and then there's out there. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're like one planet among many, there's no here and out there. It doesn't make any sense. So things, and, you know, wait a minute, and find, like, the other explanations illustrating it other ways of understanding it kind of opens up your mind a lot you're not thinking here and out there you're thinking how everything kind of fits together exercise you can everybody should be doing definitely every time you watch the news document manipulate your perspective on it have you have you heard that uh, Fox News is pretty much just about Sarah Palin now <laughs> No. Yeah, because she was talking about running for president in 2016, mm-hmm. of which I was just like, oh, please let this happen. Please let this happen. It would be an embarrassment. Oh, it would be so awesome. I have been dreaming of a Sarah Palin show. <laughs> oh, they, oh, oh, that would be that would be like fuck it all. Let's just set Chris to the heart of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Let archaeologists find that evidence of a thousand years from now being like Apparently they all went insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ended this culture. Yeah, I'm Fox News will capture it all. Uh, I bet she pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's such a surprise. <laughs> Right. But I think she's embarrassed them all quite enough. Yeah. They finally just kind of like backed off a little bit and said, you know what? Go back to Alaska. And she's also stuck in you know, binaries, you know, America, Arabia, Muslim. Stuck in the narrative. Do you think Fox News was kind of like, your kid stepped on a dog. Fuck you. We're done with you. <laughs> last straw, last thing that really got everybody embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. gone... I don't know if it had any commentary on that or anything. <laughs> You've gone too far it. this time, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I don't know how much how much this really plays in binaries exactly, um, but it did kind of for me sort of play into transgender a bit. Um, my late wife was multi personality, you know, and that was really like you know why couldn't someone Why, just because most of us are born with the singular person, why would there not be room for this other, frankly, type of consciousness? Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and that's mostly because I can't really get into the head of somebody who's transgender or why they can't make a decision. Again, you know, for it's really kind of hard to get into the head of multiple personality almost the same way. Because mm-hmm. it's just a really hard to really understand. Like, how is she multiple personality? She said, do we each have like different memories and ways it happens, I guess? Uh, that is a possibility. That was not her, though. She had shared memories across, uh, across her personality, but uh, a lot of the personalities were not in the mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so you would know something. And, and after getting into a stable relationship, a stable home life, Mm-hmm. Did you have a different relationship? With that? Did you have a different relationship with each of your personality? To a certain extent, yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know. So you never got bored. Uh, it, it, it was kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of want to come home and have a person. <laughs> <laughs> Not much a roommate. And, you know, and again, after a while, it's. Oh. But it's just the idea of, of there being different types of experiences. Mm-hmm. You have to make different views. Of who we are, mm-hmm. you know, that are no less valid. Right, it's completely valid. Each of our personalities, just not even an excuse for anything. Yeah. So. No, but I wonder if you know before the time of. How it would have been perceived and how it would have been addressed. I'm sorry, say that again? I'm wondering how, you know, before the time of psychology, how how those split perceived by, you know, that person and others and how they dealt with it. Um, Good God, good question. I don't even know if it was something that anybody even really sort of aware of until we considered it inside the group. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know if, if uh, it was much of a thing before that in the 60s um, mm-hmm. where it became recognized. You know, it might have just been Mom's being goofy again, you know? Right, right. I just kind of dismissed it. Yeah. Well, I think I just kind of ran out of points. To make. I think it might be time to wrap it up. No, you're just breaking up a little. I, I'm not able to really hear you. Kind of breaking up. I think it might be time to wrap it up. Oh, you think it might be time to wrap it up? Okay. We could certainly do that. So, until next week, I am Bunny Williams, and you are? Rosemead. <laughs> see you in Utopia. We'll see you in Utopia.